Hey guys, Miracle Max here. Whew. Boy, I've been flat out. I've had all sorts of repairs that I've been doing. I've been doing tablet repairs, amplifier repairs, microwave oven repairs, air conditioning repairs. I apologize for not being able to put all of them on uh, film and put them up on YouTube, but uh, I've been able to put the highlights of some of the repairs that I've done. At the moment, I'm looking at a, uh, what's that, a Voxon um, 5.1 home cinema um, amplifier. The customer said to me that originally it was only working with loud sounds. Every time there was a whisper during a movie or low sounds, the amplifier would disappear. So what's wrong with it? Let's check it out and see if we can fix it. So I'm just about to turn on the amplifier and I've noticed an interesting thing. I've got it turned on at the power point there. If I reach back here and let's turn him on and yep, I can hear the hum of the transformer. So I know that power's going through it. But hang on a sec, where's my standby light? It's just not there. And if I turn on the uh, button, the power source there, it doesn't go from standby to the on position. What's going on? He also told me that he only works it with the remote control. Here's one I've prepared earlier. It's got a battery in it, it's not a problem. And one of the um, awesome things about using a camera is that we can actually see the ultraviolet light coming out here. So check it out, here we go. Can you see that little light flashing? Now we can't see that with our human eye, but we can see with the camera. You can do it with your mobile phone as well. If you just put your phone on, um, bear with, If we put it on to, I don't know if it'll work from camera to camera. There you go, check it out. So you can actually do it with your mobile phone. Um, but I can't see it with my eye, but I know that the remote is working okay. And I can press each button and that light will flash, which is sending a signal to my amplifier. But I've got no power to my amplifier or the main uh, standby system. That's next on the list. Here's a trick and tip. When you're working with so many different appliances, it's easy to get all the screws mixed up and you don't know where the hell you are at that particular point in time. What I do is, because I work with auto electrical stuff quite a bit, I get these containers that have the electrical terminals in them. The boxes are absolutely awesome. When I've finished with all the terminals inside, what I do is I keep the empty box, which has a convenient lid that goes with it, you see. After I've done that, when I'm working on a particular appliance for a customer, I write all their details or of the unit itself. I put that inside my little box. And he goes at the bottom. There he is. And then I get all the screws, da -de da -de da chuck them in, put the lid on. Job's done, okay? So there's a little uh, trick and tip for you so that you don't lose any of the screws and you know exactly which appliance or repair it belongs to. As you can see, I'm working on the amp now, but I have the, the plug disconnected. And you know my theory about having a disconnected plug sitting in front of you so that you can see that it's disconnected from the wall and it's safe to work on. Now, let's start with the basics, shall we? It's important to start with the simple things. Remember the motto, keeping the complex simple. Let's start with the fuse. What do you think? Do you think the fuse is blown? Well, I don't think it is. And the reason being is what I told you before. I could listen to it and I could actually hear the transformer hum. So therefore, I think that the fuse is okay. Will you take my word for it? Should I take my word for it? No, I shouldn't. Let's test it. So if I disconnect the fuse, here's my little fuse. I think it's a two amp one. I get my multimeter, dum de dum de dum ohms. We'll stick it on ohms. Can you see that there? And if I just go that against my little fuse, and there we go, we've got continuity. So I know that fuse is okay. I thought it would be okay. Now I've tested it and I've proved that it's okay. What's the next step? Let's pull this bad boy apart. So, did you miss me? I've been out the back for a while helping my wife shift some pot plants and putting them in the garden. You know what they say, happy wife, happy life. Um, but fortunately, I have a good wife, so it's not a problem. Anywho, back to the matter at hand. Let's have a look at this amp. What's next? Let's pull it apart. The customer did make mention that he'd pulled the back off and put it back on. So I assume that he hasn't done anything. But uh, 
when we pull the back off, I did notice uh, a, a little bit of an explanation as to why I had no power at my front. If it got to reconnect half the connectors. In this line of work, it does tend to get to the point where it's not worth repairing a particular um, appliance. Um, it has to be either recycled or thrown away, whatever the case may be. Um, I seem to have the motto that if I can't fix it, I won't charge you. Um, and sometimes, you know, people accept that and that's fine. Other times people like to show their appreciation for the work that I have done so far. Point in case, check this out. Uh, one kind lady, after I did some work on her air conditioner, um, gave me all this chocolate. Not only that lot, but there's, uh, what do we got? We've got some chocolate there, Ferrero Rocher. Um, old gold, uh, I think this is rum and raisin or something along those lines, and two Toberone. So that's clearly an example of people showing appreciation for the work that's done. So if you hear any munching in the background, don't worry about it, it's just me getting through a Toberone. Got the switch at the back of the amp already switched on, but I'll turn on the power supply now and see what happens. Hello, we have a standby light. Excellent. Let's press our standby switch and we have it all up and running. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a little more information from the customer so that we're not chasing our tail? So now what we need to do is go back to our original fault. But, uh, I'll keep you in the loop, how's that? This amp has a self-test feature so that you can test each individual speaker and channel. Um, on your remote here, for instance, if we have a look, we should hit the test button there, in theory. And it will go through and check each individual um, speaker of course keep in mind I've only got two speakers I've only got two speakers plus the um, the woofer down here the sub <coughs> um, so that's why we're only going to get a couple of sounds come out of it but it's a good feature so that you can test so you can test each individual section I have gone through already and shifted those speakers I've only been given two speakers um, but I have gone through and switched the speakers to each channel I've gone through and checked each channel and each speaker to make sure that they work and they work fine. So let's see if we can get the uh, system to play up like the customer has said. Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin so you can hear it's quite loud at the moment, um, but given time, when it gets to voices etc, um, it'll get a lot softer. Um, so we'll just give it some time, I'll... I'll um, Eastern I'll record it when it cuts in and cuts out, out, okay? So if we check this out, we can hear it's quite loud at the moment, but if we change the mode to include the rear speakers, have a listen. The sound cuts down by heaps. So it's definitely an issue there that we need to address. The settings appear to be the same up here. It's definitely louder on the front uh, two channels, but when we bring in the back or the rest of the channels, it just dies out in the sound. So I think that's related to what the customer was, was complaining about. Before you start poking and prodding and electrocuting yourself, even though you've got the power now disconnected and the power cord in front of you, it's really important that we discharge these main uh, filter capacitors. You can tell that they're the filter capacitors because they're close to the um, diodes which will change our transformer AC into the DC that we need to run the board. So how do we discharge a capacitor? I've made up a pair of tweezers here. You can see they're plastic in nature and I've got two um, resistors in series. I think they're 520 uh, in series together and all you do is um, when you get your filter capacitors in front of you, all you do is you put these across the caps and like that way for instance and that will just drain the excess voltage that's in there if there's any available. Afterwards you can check across there with a voltmeter as well just to be safe but it's important that you do that before you do any testing otherwise you can get a nasty shock. I have done some testing already and one method I do use while the system is actually running, if you're looking for ICs that are a bit dodgy, is using freezer spray. Now this stuff is really good. If you've got it running and you're unsure about a, a certain IC, you just give it a blast with this sort of stuff. It pretty much freezes instantly. In theory, zoom in on that, see if we can get closer. 
I'll just give you another shot and you can see it freezes you can hear it sizzle etc and what can happen is um, if it's internally faulty if it's shorted sometimes if you freeze it it'll be enough to get it up and running again so you can tell that that's the actual faulty component I've gone through the entire system I can't find any ICs that are dodgy but that doesn't mean anything so um, what I'm going to do next is um, do a little more research on these power tra um, power transistors which are our main ones that we use for the channels and uh, see what they actually do what their ratings are etc generally there's not an easy way of testing those but um, that could be the fault themselves so I'll do some more research on that first while it's not unusual for these main power uh, transistors to fail um, keep in mind that it's also important to check all these other components around here particularly these little fellas here the other little transistors um, I have done a reading on all of these and this one here is a little bit sus so I want to check that off circuit or off board and just see how that compares if it's faulty or not so all the testing that I've done so far seems to point toward our power amplifiers that's this little fella over here and this one here uh, one is a uh, TDA7265, I think it's that one, and this one over here is a TDA7377. Now you can chase, like I've done testing in this board here, etc. Can't find any fault with it. Um, these little amplifiers will play up; they get hot, as you can see. They're on a, a massive heat sink, and once they overheat, they tend to fry inside, um, and they will play up. So I've bought another set, and I'll just whack those in and see if that sorts out our issue. Okay, so I've got both my Darlington transistors in. Happy as Larry, uh, went in quite well. This one here is bolted directly to the heat sink, of course using um, some thermal paste. This one over here is actually insulated from the heat sink, therefore these two can't have a continuity between them um, through the heat sink, of course. Um, so that's all set up, ready to go. Time to test it, let's give it a shot. You're gonna get the procedure up to us, whatever it is. Well, I've had this amplifier running for roughly about three hours now. The highs are excellent in frequency, the lows, the woofer, etc. It's got that deep rumble that we need. And also, um, the mid range is perfect. I don't have any voices that are cutting out when they're down low, so uh, hopefully, it's a fix. Um, I'll put it all back together now. It's sort of in a million bits at the moment. But uh, as soon as I put it back together, I'll give it back to the customer, claim it as a fix, and then on to the next job. So the amps all put together now, packed up, ready for delivery to the customer. What was the problem with this particular unit? Well, it was a bit of a judgment call this time. I didn't have a schematic. I had no real direction to go in. But after some consultation with another technician, the uh, Darlington transistors or the power amplifiers were replaced. They were the most common or most likely fault and that proved to be true in this particular case. So these two little Darlington transistors, one is a PNP and the other is an NPN uh, transistor. They were the ones that were replaced. So it's good news for the customer. It's up and running and another thing out of my workshop. So guys, I hope you got something from this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. Give it a like. Feel free to comment down below. Until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. Catch you later.